I think this is the most intelligent Christian woman I've ever seen confront not just any Muslim, but Muhammad Hijab specifically. My gosh, guys. I mean, this woman is very intelligent, and the argument she presents literally makes Muhammad Hijab stutter and stumble on his toes because he can't answer any of the argumentation or questions she brings against Islam. Please go ahead and watch because this will not disappoint guys don't forget to subscribe like comment and don't forget to buy our make america born again merch for christ and the representation of his kingdom and you guys can go ahead and donate on paypal to help me financially keep doing this full time and god bless you guys you're about three times now Mark. you're not silly are you no, you know what i'm saying you're just skirting what i'm saying in the respect of the preservation of the quran uh, in, within, this, within islamic circles yeah, no yeah. Yeah, you don't really. see any apostasy by um, no i don't have a view uh, come across any uh, scholars islamic scholars that no, become I imams who've, uh, apostasy. i don't know about imams you can have an imam yeah. uh, you can have any imam this young man here could be an imam. He's very good looking enough. He's got a fantastic good voice. Good looking enough. That's a big theological advantage when you're good looking. Is that for the, um, like when you divorce people, you, if the wife wants to go back, you need to be quite good looking. What are you talking about here? <laughs> I'm talking about the. Why are you bringing marriage into the conversation? I know I look good today. You just said, do you? It's just the colour shirt. You know. Okay, it's so. As you can see. Look how he tries to use reverse psychology whenever he tries to use looks to justify a quote unquote man of God. She's also using the same thing, but in a sarcastic manner. And then uh, there's just so many issues with it, but he's being so disingenuous and trying to use reverse psychology against her as a woman. So messed up. And it shows how Muslims treat women in Islam. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. You're talking about good looking and this okay. and that. What's, what's the latest thing? What well, are you going to ask me next? Okay, Christian polemicism. You still do that, don't you? You polemicize Christianity. Sometimes here and there. Yeah, yeah. What's, okay. the, what's the latest thing that you find irreconcilable? Because that was our original debate, but that was... I I feel like the, the things I find reconcilable about Christianity are the same things that Christians themselves found irreconcilable. Excellent. Can you give me an example? Like, for example, the Trinity. Irreconcilable in as much as you don't understand it the way other people no, do? No, it's, it's that people struggle to conceptualize it and to even believe it, and that they have schools of thought because of it. That's why you had in Christianity, you had tritheists. You had, you, you had individuals that are on one, on one side of the equation and people on the other side. That's why you had Augustine write a book on the Trinity, which is yes. multi-volume long. And he's trying to uh, ex explain it in the fourth century. So it's not, yeah. it's not new. Yeah. This has been happening in Christianity for uh, 1,500, 1,300, uh, 700 years. Excellent. And do you think that if you did uh, miraculously fully understand it, that would make any jot of difference to your faith? Because the, the trinity of the Quran is not what anyone's been discussing for hundreds of years. It, that's Father, Son and Holy Spirit as opposed to Mary. Do you see? So it's an utterly different trinity to the one that Allah references in what? the Quran. Yeah, but the Quran doesn't say the trinity includes Mary. It does. No, it doesn't. Well, he says, don't take, uh, did I did I tell, what is it? He's speaking to Isa. He said, I didn't yeah. tell you to take well, your if, mother For example, yourself, look, let's, let's, let's have an example. Ibn, Ibn, Ibn Taymiyyah wrote a book called the Jawab al-Sahih, yeah? right. which was a response to Christians. Yeah, It's called the, the fitting response or something like that, or the correct response. And in it, he has a whole chapter where he talks about the, the Trinity that the Quran mentions. Yes. And in it, he's, he's let's just say an apparentist. He looks at the apparent meanings. He says that the Quran doesn't doesn't specify what, who's in the Trinity. I'm not saying Muhammad Hijab has... Well, excuse, let me finish. He's lying and this is so far from the truth. Well, guys, if we actually go to their Quran, Surah 5, Ayah 73 to 75, it states, Those who say Allah is one and a trinity have certainly followed, fallen into disbelief. There is only one God. If they do not stop saying this, those who disbelieve among them will be afflicted with a painful punishment. Will they not turn to Allah in repentance and seek his forgiveness? And Allah is all forgiving, most merciful. And then it continues to say, Say, O Prophet, how can you worship besides Allah those who can neither harm nor benefit you? And Allah alone is the all-hearing, all-knowing. Say, O people of the book, do not go to extremes in your faith beyond the truth, nor follow the vain desires of those who went astray before you. They misled many and strayed them away from the right path. The disbelievers among the children of Israel were condemned in the revelation of David and Jesus and son of Mary. That was for their disobedience and violations. So it's literally saying that Mary and the Father and Jesus are a part of the Trinity. Guys, do you guys understand the hypocrisy in this? Because even if we're quote unquote wrong about the Trinity as Christians, which we're not, 
the Muslims are for sure wrong because they literally, their God, who is supposedly all-knowing, didn't couldn't even get our belief system correct. He literally claims that Mary is a part of the Trinity. Nowhere throughout history do you ever see that. Even if you want to claim that Catholics and Orthodox worship Mary, okay, let's say they do. Well, guess what? They also affirm of the Trinity. So that would be four gods. That wouldn't be a triune God, which would be three, right? According to how they want to perceive it. Obviously, we know that we worship a triune God. That is one God. But in the way they perceive it, they perceive it we're polytheists, right? But I'm saying even if you look at it from an Islamic perspective, you can't you can't see it as more than uh, a, a three. You get what I'm saying? So it doesn't make any sense. Even Catholics and Orthodox even if you want to claim again they worship mary that's four gods not three so who is this group that muhammad is speaking of they don't exist because he literally just created the quran out of nothingness it wasn't a revelation from god it was a revelation from demons it's satanic that's what the quran is guys satanic i'm not saying muhammad hijab's opinion on the quranic verses are x because muhammad hijab's on the uh, quranic verses are irrelevant to the majority of people i'm not a no, master not You've got no 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 problem but the only people that listen to me are those who want to see me transmit the information of the big scholars of the past so i'm telling you ibn Taymiyyah, who died at 728 ah a good 700 years ago he wrote in his book called the job sahih he said that there's a chapter where he talks about what Sorry, the... Sorry, can I just... Let me finish. 700 AH is only 700 seven years ago. 728 AH, which is after Hij after AD, Hijri. Like, after yeah. Hijri, yeah? Okay, 13th yeah. century uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, AD, okay? okay. Yeah, so anyway, uh, it's like 1328 or something like that, right? What I'm saying is that Ibn Taymiyyah writes in his book, there's a whole chapter that's dedicated to, does the Quran... He answers this question, which you're bringing to me now. Does the Quran specify a kind of trinity? His answer is it, it doesn't. So it includes all the. He actually says this includes all. So this guy's trying to use a, a, a theologian from the 1997, who we don't even know is credible, right? But he's trying to use a theologian from the 1990s compared to the actual apostles of Jesus Christ, compared to the actual word of God. Like, why not go to the religious text themselves instead of some random theologian who isn't credible? Or, you know, what I mean? Like, it doesn't make any sense. It's very disingenuous take on his behalf. All the models of Trinity that Christians have believed in historically. Which Christians believed in Mary and Isa and Allah? I've already told you that Quran doesn't specify that. You'd have to bring no, no, me the it's evidence. Reference. Well, it's in the Quran. No, it's not in the Quran. There are no uh, messages from Allah in the For example, uh, Allah subhanahu wa He's coming in to Kia. He knows it's in the Quran. This is what Muslims do. They lie because they know you don't have the exact verse on the spot. So then they'll say, aha, I got you in a corner. No, you didn't. You just lied your way into it. What, what, what's the point of defending Islam if you have to lie to defend it? It shouldn't be that way. It should be like, whoa, Islam is true. So I, I defend it because it defends itself. That's how it is with me in the Bible. Muslims, they can't say the same because they have to lie in order to defend their false faith, Islam. I, I, look, the only, when Allah says in the Quran, do not take yeah. my, me and my mom ilahain, to two lords. That is because we are... Alongside as, Allah. Yeah, fine, fine. It, yeah. it doesn't say in the Quran that Mary and, Mary and, and Jesus are part of the Trinity. It says... Did you ask them that you yeah. took to you and your mum as a lord? Now let me ask. Let me so tell you that something. Hold on. That implies that Allah has seen a time when this is believed Same because no, he's it, asking. It, all it, it, so all why it did, you, did you say it? All it implies is that Christians do tali, or they uh, they create a divine relationship with Mary. Now, if you look at what the Quran's understanding of worship is, for example, Allah says in the Quran, "Afaraita man ittaqada ilaha hawa." Have you seen the one who has taken his own self as a god? Right. Yeah. Like the pagans. I guess maybe individuals who uh, act upon who make their desire the ultimate authority yeah, yeah? they make a god in their own image uh, the, the prophet muhammad said in the hadith ta'isa abdu dinario dirham that cursed is the one who worships the coin the dinar and the dirham money basically mm -hmm. money worshiper mm -hmm. and now if your if your theory held that everywhere the quran and sunnah uh, talked about a different type That's of god and i'm just saying yeah. you understand that to the quran dictates or tells us that there are certain ways in which a human being can take something or someone as a god. The way in which Mary is seen as to be taken as a god is that the kind of worship that we would consider, especially Generation. Roman Catholics, yeah. venerate, call it whatever you like, yeah, yeah. Roman Catholics in particular, mm -hmm. who call her the mother of God, yes. yeah, 
we would consider this and Protestants would actually agree and that's why I find it is uh, you as a Protestant I find it uh, quite uh, shocking that you're asking me this I'm not asking yeah, you yeah. but Catholics yeah, don't uh, believe the Trinity yeah, doesn't have the Holy Spirit I know no, I didn't say it the, the, oh, I that. said it no no, no I, I, I'm I know. just pointing out I'm, for anyone the who's Quran, not familiar. the only verse you could be referring to is this particular verse that's it okay yes. now this verse in doesn't, the clear and concise the, yeah, Quran yeah in the clear and concise Quran it doesn't say the Trinity consists of Ma, uh, Mary this and that. No, it's an inference, that's what I said. That's your inference okay. is wrong. I'm saying that your inference is... is oh, there is, are the references to a differing trinity within about, say, not three. The Quran it, doesn't specify it doesn't. who... It does okay, not... So my next question. The Quran doesn't specify who are in the... who's in the trinity. Yeah. Doesn't specify. That's Excellent. why I'm saying that Ibn Taymiyyah mentions in his book, Hijab Sahih, who died 700 years ago, mm. he's saying that because the Quran does, it doesn't specify for a reason. It actually does specify. It states clearly the Father, Jesus, and Mary are part of the Trinity. He's being so disingenuous, dishonest coming into Kia right here, guys. But this next part is going to get very interesting and spicy, guys. So that it can include all of the models of Trinity. Let me give you, let me, let me give you an example, right? In, in the first 300 years of Christianity, the Holy Spirit was not seen as a divine, co-equal, co-eternal. What's your source for that? One? I'll tell you, uh, J.M.D. Kelly, right? J &D, a modern author. Yeah, it's a modern author, Christian author. Well, there's J &D there's Kelly. only the one that you can bring, Ruben, then it's not. Jesus Just was let, me, let me finish, let me finish. All three, let me finish. All three were yeah, yeah, okay. the uh, You tell me what's my source, I've given you your yeah. source, yeah? Okay, J &D, I don't accept that source. You don't, don't have to accept problem. it, no problem. I'm saying that he gives us primary sources. He give, he he he, he gives the primary sources. Okay. He gives more than one primary source evidence. Let me but tell you what. He, the Bible is his primary yes, he source. does. Yes, he does. Of course, he does. But let me let me let me yeah. stop saying things you don't know. I do know. You, okay, who's Jane? Who is Jane Dean Kelly? Say what's his What's his book? Sorry, I'm, what's I'm he talking you about? What I'm saying you've misunderstood what I'm saying. I'm saying the Bible does not. The New Testament doesn't give any verses that imply anyway, the Holy Spirit is not God. Let, let me tell you something. Jane D. Kelly makes the following argument. Or he, he, he's not even making an argument, he's, he's narrating history. He's saying that, look, for example, if you look at the primary source material, if you look at the Nicene Creed of 325, yeah? Yes. You will find that the Father is mentioned, yes, the, Holy, the Son is mentioned, yes, the Holy Spirit is mentioned. Yes. But the Holy Spirit is not mentioned as co-equal and co-eternal God. Lord, give her a blight. Lord, Lord. He's when only... Jesus let, let, let me finish, let me finish. When Jesus so, was baptized, stop, stop, stop. all three were stop, together. Stop, 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 stop. All stop. three were together. He's not what are you saying? He's not, oh, he's not okay. mentioned as co-equal and co-eternal with, with God. Oh, uh, with uh, with, uh, with the Father of the So our Chalcedon, so, 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 not before Chalcedon, yeah, in, Const in Constantinople, because you said Chalcedon in 451. No, because there's so, a split, there's a rift after that where he proceeds from. You're right. But what I'm saying before that, you mentioned Chalcedon. You mentioned Chalcedon. Chalcedon is 451. I'm saying in 381, that's when now, right before 381, when there was the Constantinopolean Creed, yes. a Constantinople Creed, that's when you had the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, co equal, co eternal. Now, in the, in the, in the interim, Nicaea. in the interim, it's after, so 381, and I see 325. Oh, okay. All right, so you got 325, you got the Father and the Son, both are co equal, co eternal. The Holy Spirit is not co equal. He's the Lord giver of life. He's the Lord giver of life, no problem. But it's not co equal, co eternal, God. Yeah, I'm saying the we believe hold on, hold on. the Holy Spirit, know, the Lord, I, I, the I know, life, so that implies I know, divinity. Not really, because we don't believe no, no, no. in anything other hold than on. divinity. Hold on, give me, give me a second. Yeah. I understand. I know what you believe. I'm just yeah. saying that this is how your belief developed. 325. Give me a second. Okay. 325. When there was the Aryan controversy, and then <laughs> look how frustrated and upset he's becoming, guys. I mean, if you guys don't see. <laughs> He's becoming so visibly upset and angry. Like, literally, his vein looks like it's going to pop out, guys. Look at his, literally, look at his face for the next minute or two and tell me this isn't funny, guys. After the subsequent Nicene Creed, that's what happened. 381 now, now you have the Constantinopolitan Creed. Now, what happened between? You had the Cappadocian Fathers, okay? The Cappadocian Fathers, who J.M.D. Kelly mentioned, uh, Gregory of Nyssa, Be Basil, of uh, these three, three men, okay? The, the question was, what is the status of the Holy Spirit? Yes. Okay, now this question of what is the status of the Holy Spirit, itself, the fact that there was a question, was it a creature, was it an angel, was it whatever? After the question was raised, that's why, one of the main reasons why they started doing another, uh, another council in 381. And when they did the other council, the Holy Spirit was recognized thereafter recognized not it not imputed no but listen see? it was recognized Meaning there it's always been and listen please let, let me decision. just finish they, it was recognized they were recognized it was recognized thereafter as coequal and co-eternal yes. now theodos notice how she's very intelligent with this not imputed meaning it wasn't created or it wasn't an ideology that was invented at that time hundreds of years after christ that's when it was established as a creed for the reason to stray away from heresy 
So pretty much, if you guys don't know what the what it was, like basically, it's just to establish the fact that these are biblical Christian doctrines, and anything outside of that are unbiblical. And they went about this by seeing what the early church fathers believed in from the actual word of God. They went by the word of God as the foundation of what the actual apostles taught, what they believed in, what they followed in at that time period, instead of listening to some random her heretical dude 2,000 years later. That's the reason why they had the 19th Creed, so we can have our foundational beliefs that we have today as born-again Christians. This is the second who was in charge of the Roman Empire at the time. He then forced this decree by force. Anyone who went against the Constantinopolitan Creed of 381 would be uh, banished, be persecuted, or whatever. Do you disapprove of people who enforce laws. No, I haven't, more, I, haven't, I haven't made a moral. I haven't. I haven't made a moral judgment. I'm just telling no, you history. You, I'm just, I haven't yeah. made a moral judgment. Why you said force? I have no, no that problem. To. Yes, yeah, I do. By the way, I do. But that's a separate discussion. No, anyway, no a, problem. Yeah. yeah, that's what you think. That's your uh, yeah. distorted understanding. Three eighty. Well, the don't want to be killed. No, listen, surely. Whatever. Yes. Okay. Three eighty one. Theodosius II, he enforced the Constantinopolitan Creed, which now had the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit as co equal co In other words, if you look at, and this is why I dare you and I challenge you and I challenge the whole Christian world, and I have been doing so for the last. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've been doing so. Wow, look how he belittles her, degrades her. I mean, just seeing these Muslim men like him, and also what's the other one, the lantern dude, the Muslim lantern that had his lights blew out. And also that ha probably had his back blown out too. I mean, it's crazy, disgusting things that Muhammad did. Muhammad literally had his back blown out and it's very sad. I'm not even trying to say that as a joke. It's very disgusting. Muhammad actually had his back blown out by three demons within their hadith. That's literally what it says. I know it's disgusting, but that's what it says. And so you guys see this dude named muhammad he's literally getting really aggressive with her he's belittling her and then he's trying to use reverse psychology at the end because he couldn't answer his question or her question now he's trying to ask her a question because he can't answer it it just makes you think like whoa if they treat random woman like this right <laughs> imagine how they treat their wives in private i feel bad for their wives like whoa imagine the manipulation of the things they have to go through behind closed doors this is some scary stuff, guys. Very, very, very scary stuff. This is the difference between Islam and Christianity, guys. Islam teaches hatred. It teaches you to belittle people. Jesus Christ teaches us gentleness, peace, love, joy, patience, forgiveness, self-control. Totally different religion, totally different God, guys. You cannot compare Islam to Christianity. It's like comparing fruits to rotten fruits, guys. You guys cannot compare the two, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you guys think about this. I believe she made some really good arguments. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you guys want to go ahead and uh, support us, please go ahead and become a member on www.thinkingmindsministry.com. The link will be below. Just in case YouTube band so you can go ahead and watch our content there free 99 and also excuse me but also you guys can go ahead and, and buy our make miracle born again merch again you don't have to be american to buy it it's just so that you can go ahead and represent the kingdom of christ and represent the merch guys and you guys can go ahead and donate on paypal that's the best way to financially support me um but yeah let me know what you guys think about this please like comment and share subscribe so that youtube algorithm can share the gospel to more people in case you haven't heard the gospel uh, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And Jesus, when he was actually here on this earth, he says, believe and repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And so a repentance is literally a conversion. It's a transformation. It's a change of heart and mind. So if you're addicted to pornography, if you're addicted to smoking, that's a conversion. You want to you want to transform your life. And you can only do that by the renewing of the mind through Christ alone and through the power of the holy spirit guys but by believing and repenting of your sins you shall not perish if you believe and repent in christ alone guys that's literally the gospel that's what christ teaches us that's the message that jesus christ taught he preached that all throughout all throughout the world guys the gospel if we have faith in christ alone we shall be saved so thank you guys so much for watching i hope this was edifying and fruitful and God bless you guys.